Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, Saturday, March 21st. It's uh, 2.23 a.m. in Fort Worth, Texas. I guess I need to say the year. It's 2020. I now have, uh, back to using two monitors, both in 1080p, so everything will be okay, you know. Um, this may be sort of a repeat of the video that I made a few hours ago or yesterday. I guess I made it right after or during uh, Trump's uh, press conference or whatever it was here where we see him pointing the finger at the newsman or whatever. I couldn't watch. I mean, I just saw a little bit of it, and I wasn't watching it. I went into the kitchen. It was on in the TV, you know, it was on the TV in the kitchen, and I was getting some food. So while I was getting the food ready, I caught part of it, and it just set me off. And I made a, I made a video about it yesterday. So this is maybe a little bit of a recap of that. Um... um You know, this reporter asked, uh, well, by the way, um, I'll put a link below for this. I'll put a link before. I, I watch a bunch of his videos and I'm really impressed. <laughs> I'm glad I started watching it. Um, I guess when he started out, he was doing... Uh, using his appearance, uh, and then I'm not sure exactly if he was doing satire or, I, I didn't see the early videos that he made, but uh, he uh, used that, but now he's transitioned over and he's not, I don't think he's using his, that is his appearance, you know, the way he looks, but I, I think if I had seen him in the past, I would have thought, okay, here's a right-wing, uh, you know, <laughs> gun. Enth he is a gun. Enth I mean, a believer in the Second Amendment and what have you. But I would have, I, I, you know. But I'm really impressed by every video that he makes. It's, and because he was able to, he's able to make so many, uh, all of them good. So I'll put a link below to this one because uh, he talks about... Uh, President Trump's uh, press conference and the fact that all this reporter asked was uh, a lot of Americans are, you know, concerned and scared about this as president. What can you say to him? And then Trump attacks him. Uh, and... Uh, you know, that Trump just should have, you know, reassured him because a lot of people are frightened about a lot of different, you know, things. Uh, and uh, that was a perfect opportunity for Trump to be presidential, although I don't know if we've ever seen him actually be presidential, you know. But that was a perfect opportunity uh, for him to say something, you know, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. And things like that, you know, ask not what you can do for your country, but, you know, or ask not what your country can do for you, but, you know, what you can do for your country. And, and he, that was a perfect opportunity. And he just, uh, and then to the fact that uh, I think it's discussed, I haven't actually looked at it, but I'm sure, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Gupta, or whatever his name is, uh, stunned by what happened at the Trump briefing. I haven't read it, but I'm sure that's that the fact that Trump is just saying what comes to his mind and what he thinks based on no scientific fact or knowledge or being uh, informed about it. I mean, he just, and he just says what comes on, you know. And then when the doctor, 
uh, or the head of the, well, a doctor, but head of the CDC or what, I don't exactly what he's, I keep, keep I forgot. But then, uh, he ha he's asked to, you know, and so he can't come and say, well, listen, our president is an idiot. You know, as head of the CDC, this guy is an idiot. But he can't do that, so he has to uh, say, well, uh, yes, we will be looking into this, and we definitely will be, te you know, checking out this, and we will be doing the necessary scientific steps, and, you know, having to do all this stuff. At the same time, he's got this uh, president. So... Um, We placed an order, by the way, uh, another one, <laughs> sort of a test, because I am paying the $13 a month now for free uh, Walmart delivery, food delivery. And uh, it's $13 a month or a little bit less if you pay, you know, for a year at a time. And so this is the first time we, so we ordered about I think we had two orders maybe this week or maybe three orders. But this last one was a small order. But they were out of, what was it? Anyway, they were out of a bunch of stuff. And, uh, and they made substitutes. And like I said before, when they substitute, you come out ahead on the deal. Um... Like I said, too, in the video yesterday, my ex-wife is very, she's one of these people, very concerned about toilet paper and afraid that the world is going to, or that the United States is going to run out of toilet paper or whatever. And I keep telling her, no, that's the one thing, the United States, we have a lot of shit here and we have a lot of toilet paper here and we manufacture it here and it's here and it's, you know, we may run out of Apple, you know, iPhones or, uh, I don't know, what, you know, cameras or whatever. We may run out of that stuff, but we're not going to run out of toilet paper, but she's concerned. And a lot of people are, and I heard on the news, I'm not sure if it was CNN or where I heard it, but uh, people have been buying it up, you know, buying toilet paper up all over the world. So I thought it was just sort of maybe the United States and maybe a few other countries. But, you know, that, uh, like I said yesterday, I was in Miami. I lived in Miami for five years. We had a number of hurricanes that came through there. And people just go nuts. And before the hurricanes would hit, people would go and buy everything. You know, of course, flashlights, batteries, and things you need, you know. But then they would also stock up on gasoline, uh, just everything. And places shouldn't, if everybody just took what they needed, you know, or a little bit more, you wouldn't have the shortages and the problems. But anyway, um, I'll be glad for my ex-wife's sake. Uh, when I got married, my... Uh, she was 18, I was 26, and we were married for uh, 12 years, so I was about 40 when we got divorced, and for uh, I'd say maybe a year, year and a half, or something like that, we, uh, you know, well, I had, I didn't have to, I, I would I, instead of paying my, instead of paying child support once a month, every time, I got paid every two weeks, so I would take over, go over, uh, give my oldest daughter the, you know, the ch I'd be waiting in the car and give her the check or whatever and tell her to take it because I wanted my kids to know, you know, that I, and took it in, and then the kids would get with, with me and, and we'd go, you know, eat movie or something or other. And uh, so I'm not sure how, 
then things went to hell um, and ended up, I don't know how long it was, uh, a year, several, uh, several years, I think. I didn't, I still paid my child support, you know, although I was one of those men that you hear about that you don't believe who ended up getting screwed by the, uh, the system. And I ended up paying more, you know, paying some years over again. Partially stupidity on my part for, you know. And uh, then my ex-wife was able to uh, get a, my, an income tax refund that came in, seized. And you'd think there would be a hearing or whatever. Somehow the state of Missouri had uh, not passed, or pa I forget what it was, but where the, uh, the government could come in and you didn't have to have a hearing. I mean, they would notify you, oh, we're, we've, we've taken all your money. And two, you think of it like on, um, what do you call it, when somebody doesn't pay a bill and a company gets a court order, and, but they're only allowed to take a certain amount. What do they call that? Anyway, in this case, they weren't. I just, uh, and it was right at Christmas time, too, because, uh, well, yeah, I always did it. Yeah, that's right. For my family or whatever, it, uh, I paid more into the uh, income tax than I needed to pay, and about I would always have every year one thousand and two hundred dollar tax refund, and then I so that would be like in April, and then I would pick up the kids, and okay, what do you what if each one of had four kids? What do you want? And then we would go, we would eat, we'd go to a movie or whatever, and that was like Christmas. So right at this in April or whatever, uh, the government seized my uh, income tax refund. They also seized a, it might have been at a different time, a, I think that might have been at Christmas. They, I didn't get a paycheck that time. And uh, anyway, it was in a way, um, it was when we got divorced, I gave my ex-wife the house. The house wasn't paid for, but you know it was. We'd paid part of it and everything, and gave her up a, a car that was almost brand new, that was paid for. And then I just said, you know, I agreed on what the what she wanted for child support, and uh, I paid all. I took all the bills. And I moved in with my mother in a mobile home. That's all I could afford to do. And uh, what happened was, let's see. And now she was giving piano lessons at her house, you know, making some money doing that. And uh, then so I was she still doing. I don't think so. I think she, I, I think she got a job, not very long. She never, she was handicapped, by the way, had to use, you know, crutches or whatever. And so I think she had a job for a little bit. And then, so anyway, with the, with the court thing, it was, um, that I would just pay her, you know, child support. So then, I guess at some point, she went and applied for some type of assistance from the county. And they, they said, oh, you know, like, oh, well, your, your husband doesn't give you a child support. She, no, no, he gives me child support. Uh, no, he misses something. No, he, he always pays it, you know. And... Uh, So then they said, well, in order to get uh, 
assistance, and it was a small amount of assistance. And I all the time uh, kept the kids on my insurance policy till they grew out of the 18 or whatever it was. But anyway, so they said, well, okay, uh, he has to pay to the county the child support. He can't give it to you. And so I don't even think I got a thing saying I had. Maybe I did get a letter. But anyway, they, uh, she told me, don't give me the money anymore. Send it to, the, you know, Cass County. And so I did. And then after like, I don't know, three months or six months, wasn't very long, she said, oh, I um, am not getting assistance anymore because I've got a job. or something. I can't remember the exact details. That's been that was a long time, 40 years ago or something like that. Um, she said, you can just start giving it to me again. So then I started giving it to her again. You know, twice a month. And uh, so um, no, that was okay. That was, I forget why she so years went by. And then she went to the county and for to get some type of uh, assistance and I think she was like trying to get health care assistance for the kids and they had excellent health care policies on them their entire life I don't know if there was any other assistance probably some small amount of money that she was getting and that's when they were saying okay well your husband never paid you no he always paid you know no uh, no he didn't and yes he you know yes he did or whatever and uh so then they pulled up these records. They never billed me or anything or sent any kind of a... From years ago, they pulled up this data and they said, whoops, well, he was supposed to pay, you know, Cass County. And he never paid Cass County. And, of course, they weren't giving any assistance. Well, they did for, I think, three or four months or something. He never paid Cass County. And then they did the math, but for this county, uh, it turned out there was money being stolen, by the way. The local newspaper reported that the lady or whoever was in charge of the office of uh, collecting child support or whatever, she was, I guess, uh, stealing. She was related to, everybody was in that county, everybody was, everybody was related to everybody, you know, the judges and all the uh, court clerk. I mean, it's a small Harrisonville, you know, small, small, everybody there, there in the town, you know, not everybody, but it was like everybody knew everybody. Everybody uh, was related to somebody, you know, uh, clerks were related to, uh, you know, to judges and judges were related to the lawyers. And it was just, uh, But so, but so then they send me, uh, all of a sudden I get notices, and it was like, what was it? There again, I can't remember, it been like 40 years. I, then I got a letter, and it said, uh, you owe back uh, child support to Cass County in the amount of, what would it be like, 30, let's say it was like 37 uh, was it wouldn't have been thirty-seven thousand dollars? Three thousand, let's say three thousand and seven hundred dollars. And I was like, I don't know any child support, you know. And uh, I didn't know about the thing of the. Uh, and then when actually when I was fighting this thing, I never there. I was, and I even had a hearing. You know, on the phone, but not Cass County wasn't able to conduct it. They had to conduct it through Jackson County and another county, a big county, you know. And so, and my, so they were on the phone, the judge and whatever, and I was on the phone, and my ex wife was on the phone, and I was arguing. I always, you know, whatever, and I didn't know I was arguing about a different situation, all of which were screwed up. But, uh, 
Well, anyway, so Cass County sent, you know, I get this thing, you owe $3,700. I don't know anything, you know. And then the next month I get a thing that instead of $3,700, it's like 7000 uh, what did I say? Yeah, 3700 Then it's like 7300 And every month I got a, or maybe it didn't come every month, maybe it did, I don't know. Every one of these letters that came, it was a different amount that made no sense. It was, it was just bizarre. Anyway, when I had the hearing with Jackson County, one of the things I said was, uh, well, one of the things I said was, how is the, uh, you know, what type, what happened to my constitutional rights, you know, of uh, trial, and why was um, Cass County able to seize my income tax refund and a paycheck without any type of notice of a court hearing or anything? And I said, that doesn't, and anyway, uh, Jackson County, when they ruled, they said, Yes, that is, uh, Mr. Howard is correct. That is definitely a violation of, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. However, Missouri had passed something before the federal court case came into existence or, or the Supreme Court ruling or whatever. And therefore, because Missouri had passed this thing that they could do such and such, uh, this right of whatever does not exist for Mr. Howard. And then the other thing, of course, I'd mentioned was, you know, Cass County, every time I get these statements, it is a number that makes no sense. And uh, Jackson County says, you know, we agree. The, the bookkeeping and the uh, statements that he, you know, Mr. Howard received, uh, you know, I forget how they put it, you know, it totally made no makes no sense. However, <laughs> so they ruled, you know, ruled against me. So I ended up. At first, I was going to fight it. I mean, I mean, I was going to, and then I started getting like, oh fuck, this is the kind of people, you know, this, this is like when somebody goes and does something bad. You see, us, somebody goes and shoots a courthouse up or something. I thought, okay, no, I will just, I'm going to pay it, pay it over again. I paid, but I paid again. I did pay again. So I have sympathy for some of, you know, and it's too bad. I mean, it's it's really devastating. Um, like I, well, I spent 30 years working hospital security, but I worked in small town in Cass County at a hospital for, you know, 10 years. And a whole bunch of the nurses there their husbands never paid child support or just paid, you know, whatever. I heard them telling stories, you know, whatever. And I was working with them, and we were like, well, it was like a family. I never said, hey, we had an ER doctor. Man, he he was a good ER doctor, but he was nuts. I mean, he came in and raved and ranted about his ex-wife, and he was going to not pay her a penny. He had a bunch of kids with his ex-wife and he had a bunch of he married a lady that had a bunch of kids and he would come in and just be raving and ranting that he wasn't going to give his ex-wife any money he was going to go to Australia he was going to go to South America he was uh, going to join a uh, <laughs> militant you know right wing militant militia and live in the country with them you know the United States so he wouldn't have to pay a child and not pay child savings. And so I never, ever said, you know, hey, because I would just be improper to, I mean, and then I wouldn't, they wouldn't believe me anyway, you know. I, but I I never said, hey, you know, I, I pay child, I always pay child support. And then it turns out that I get hammered, uh, and I'm sure that the in a small hospital, I'm sure when the hospital had to send uh, a paycheck of mine to the county or whatever, I'm sure the word probably went around. I, I don't know that it did, but I'm sure, and I'm sure that human resources or whatever would normally keep something like that, you know. 
But I'm sure the word probably got out, went around that, hey, you know, he doesn't pay. And that, that hurt because, you know, I was paying my child support and I didn't want, that's something you should do. And it shouldn't be something that, you know, it should be the ex expected, you know. But that was kind of, that kind of hurt. But one thing, though, when they seize my uh, income tax refund, and there again, I was like, I just got a notice, you know, but you don't, you're not getting it. It's going, you know, to whatever. And I forget how old my daughter would have been. She would have been in my oldest. At that point, I think she would have been probably in high school. But I heard, and how did I hear it? I don't know. But anyway, I heard that uh, LaDonna said to her mother, that's dad's uh, income tax refund. You shouldn't get it. And and I think my ex-wife must have said, well, Bob, you know, and, and my daughter knew, you know. Dad always paid, you know, that was, that was, at least that was a positive thing, you know. So, how did I get sidetracked on that subject? Anyway, back to, this will have to be, when I have to click the thing for, story time or something, you know. You know, too, let me go back to, <laughs> let me go back to child support and how some fathers, you know, get screwed. And if you hear a story sometime about somebody, some father, you'll probably think, no, you know, like guilty. But believe me, I've been in this situation. So some of these Fathers, what you hear the story, they're really, uh, and what happened on, well, okay, now I forgot what it was going to, oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, as soon as we got divorced, every year I took my kids as dependents, uh, you know, because my Ex-wife and I, we agreed on the divorce. I sort of got screwed then, too, in a way. Of course, too, in other words, like uh, if, you get a, if you're getting a divorce, uh, especially if you're the man, I mean, well, you know, both parties, you need to, you can't have, well, you need to protect yourself. You can't have this thing of, okay, we'll, you know, we'll agree. And put it because, of course, I gave her, you know, the house, a car, a nice car, a nicer car than I had. And uh, child support that she wanted. And I forget what else. Oh, health care for the kids. And uh, anyway. So, um, oh, and the only that said, uh, I would like to claim the kids as, you know, dependents every year. And she said, fine. And so years go by, and uh, she moved in with her mother finally. And so her mother, you know, she, she moved in with the kids, with her mother, and... Uh, So at that point, I, uh, when income tax time came around, I called and I said, oh, I wanted to make sure, you know, you're living with your mother now. So, you know, she has, you know, house, if she had, I think her house was paid for, but, you know, she's uh, buying you some groceries. She's uh, blah, blah, blah. It, it, is she, does she want to, you know, claim these kids as dependent? No. I said, you're sure. Yeah. And so... Uh, they ask her. I could hear her in the background. You know, well, Jim wants to know if you, if you want to claim the kid. No, no, no. But, and there again, I should have known. She, her, and her husband. Now he was deceased at this time. 
they owned a tavern for years, for years and years and years. And uh, after her husband died, you know, she sold the the uh, tavern, but she was getting payments, you know, every month for the the tavern, the property, or whatever, you know, you know. So, and they always used a an accountant, you know, and uh, and I just did my own taxes, you know. But I should have known, but it, that but an accountant, you know. So anyway, I filed my income tax return, got my tax refund. Uh, another year, filed my tax return, you know, whatever. And then I get a notice that I'm being audited. And I thought, okay, this is a waste of time because I just took standard deduction. You know, when I was a welder, I didn't deduct for welding gloves and clothes that caught fire and chipping hammer and hood. I mean, I just took standard deduction. And then when I was working as a security officer, you know, I didn't deduct from my $550, you know, handgun, and I didn't deduct for the ammunition that I went and, you know, whatever. I, I just took standard deduction. If the government, you know, sort of was any deal, like, okay, you know, let the government have a little bit of money, you know. Uh, so then I get a notice I'm being audited, and I thought, oh, okay, this is a waste of time, you know. So I go down, and they... They had to expand out of the federal building or whatever, and they were using sort of like a shopping. It wasn't a shop. I'm not sure, but it was. It wasn't made. You know, they had you go into it and have sort of pillared areas with no walls, and then they had these stations set up like at each thing. So I'm sitting there waiting for them to come over to me, and my hearing isn't very good, but certain things I can hear. And especially, I guess, the acoustics were good there or whatever. And it was a man at every table, you know, a victim at every table. And I could hear the part of the, it was about dependence, you know. So, but I still wasn't worried. Then they they come to me and the person sits down, you know. And okay, well, you're being audited and the reason you're being audited is you claimed your four children is dependent. I said, yeah, I've been, you know, 25 years. I've been, you know, well, it wouldn't have been that long because they would have been grown. Well, not all of them, but, yeah, whatever it was, you know. Yeah, I claim them every year. Uh, well, someone else claimed your, your children as dependents. And uh, I, uh, hang on here a second. Should have done this before. So um, I said, um, well, who claimed them? Uh, we can't tell you that that's confidential information. I said, well, I, I claim my children every year, been doing it every year. I, I you know, pay child support, pay child support. And, and uh, I mean, who, you know, well, we can't tell you that. And I said, well, um, my, and for whatever year it was, you know, I said, well, my ex-wife worked that year, not the entire year, but, you know, because she, but anyway, you know, she worked that year, so maybe she decided to claim them. She never did. I said, um, but she didn't work. Then this was like the next year, you know, they were audited me for whatever this year was. And then I, we, you know, there, there was a year that, and so, and I said, and I'd filed, you know, I said, well, now I know she did not work at all during this year. Did someone claim my kids for that year? And uh, they said, just a second. And they came over. Ah, yes, someone did claim your kids for that year. And I said, well, it couldn't be my ex-wife. I said, well, she moved in with her mother. It must be her mother, my mother-in-law. Sorry, we can't give you that information. So, so they said, okay, well, you owe us, um, I think it was like 
1200 out. You know, I usually got a refund of like 1200 or whatever. Okay, well, you always uh, see $1,200 and uh, $1,200. <laughs> Talk about dumb. I just, you know, screwed my... Of course, they had to got around to it next year, you know. So, you owe us like $25, you know, $2,500 or something like that. Uh, you can just make us out a check or we can take your credit card. I said, I don't have $2,500. I said, I'll just have to make payments. And uh, how much are the payments going to be? And they they figured it out. And I worked an entire year. I was working, I was working full-time hospital security. And I worked two days a week at another hospital security for an entire year in order to get the money to pay the the uh, thing and of course it was my mother in law ex-mother in law or whatever we'd call her you know she I'm sure when she went to the accountant uh, she's the kind of person though that would have thought oh Jim's going to be mad at me or whatever so but no she just I'm sure she just oh my I have to feed the I gotta feed the cat. Cat alarm. Don't know if you can hear it or not. Anyway, I guess I'll stop here. Thanks for watching.